Don't let anybody tell you to eat your own food. Are we in for a grand breakfast? Prince of the Bear here, we're at Disney's Grand Flittering Resort today because it's white, it's beautiful, and 1900 Park Fair is finally open again. You guys have been asking us to come, we've been wanting to come, and the day has finally arrived. We're here for breakfast. Yes, remember, she's vegan. I'm not. Let's go to the fair. Be sure to enjoy 1900 Park Fair. I heard the girl. It's like drinking magic, but in orange form, passion fruit and guava. Feels like the end of a six long dream. This is the only restaurant on Disney World property we have not eaten at. The only one. Now, there are some lounges we haven't gotten to, but it's the only restaurant we haven't been to. It's been a long time coming. We had a reservation for this restaurant, the princess said, back a long, long time ago. April 2020. April 2020. And now we're... <laughs> obviously, you remember what happened in 2020. At least most of us remember. So cheers to the community. We're back. I would give it an even 4 out of 5 points. But like I had to grab the tongs and put the tong, like metal tongs, in the cool toaster and then put it down. And then obviously I'm not gonna put the metal tongs in to grab the toast. So then I'm like sitting there trying to pop the bread up repeatedly so I can like grab it at the right cadence because it was just a little bit of a, a disaster there. But I'm glad that there are three different breads to choose from and three different jams, even though there's no Earth Balance butter here, and yeah, cheers. I didn't toast it all the way, I was getting a little impatient, but I think I still toasted it, um, enough to give it like a small amount of crunch, and the strawberry jam is nice. I kind of want to try the date jam, maybe I'll try that later, I'm not sure. But I like this, I would give it like a three out of five toast, it's, it's decent toast. Again, lacking in the Earth Balance though. And this is the Grand Floridian. I got Earth Balance at the Grand Floridian Cafe. They should have it out. It's toast. We love a good toast. We love a good multi-grain bread. We love a good jam. It sounds like a princess is in a jam. Don't get yourself in a jam. Patience and all the things. Looks great. Smells great. It's just toast. Crisscross, multi-grain, fresh, good jam. Like good jam, not like cheap like public store jam but like actual good jam i would give it 3.75 out of 5 paws honestly i'll eat a pile of toast so this is a buffet um it's not really a confusing setup just a slightly different setup than normal buffets that you see. You still have the dual sides, but they don't have the same things on each side, so there's a little exploring to go. So if the order is a bit weird today, we're basically just grabbing and going. Uh, first up, we have this smoked salmon. Now it's basically build your own smoked salmon. They have cream cheese, they have tomatoes, they have onions, and they have plenty of bagels too. So if you want to put this on a bagel and not just smoke by itself, you can get that. I'm boring and I can't have cream cheese, so I just got smoked salmon and capers. All wrapped and ready to be eaten. Something to be said for coming to a buffet, like first thing in the morning, you want to get them in the foods out and fresh. Now they're refreshing food all the time in the buffet, but things like smoked salmon, you can tell they've been sitting for too long. 
This feels fresh and perfect. If you don't like super like fishy taste, I would never recommend smoked salmon with somebody for breakfast. You're gonna have fish for breakfast, okay? I would give this three and a half out of five stars. One of the things I like so far about 900 Park Fair than any other buffet we've ever been to is they have like dedicated fancy spoon rests. Like you do have spoon rests at other buffets where it's just like a plate. This one's like a little dish to sit the scoop in and then like a little like elevated platform to put the ladle in instead of just putting it back in the food or sitting on the counter like you told you want to do. People here, we're elevating the game. Bring classy. Put your spoons back in the spoon rests. Other buffets, pet notes. Here, we have a cheesy potato casserole. It's hash browns and cheese. A nice little crust on it. Plenty of the potatoes. I know that I say, you can't go overboard on cheese. And I have yet to find a situation where you can go overboard on cheese. But if you're approaching a limit, it's there. But it hugs the line so deliciously. I would shovel this down my mouth. Uh, 4.25 out of 5. Here we have Eggs Benedict. You don't see me get Eggs Benedict very often because Hollandaise has a lot of butter and milk in it. Usually, usually more than I can handle. Most buffets, when you see Eggs Benedict, it is drenched in the Hollandaise sauce. So I am usually never going to be able to eat any. Like, ever. This time, however, they put a manageable amount on top where I could eat some and hopefully be okay. That nice poached egg, ham, with a nice toasted and looks like buttered uh, egg uh, big mu muffin. It's not egg McMuffin. Been to McDonald's one too many times. A nice cut. Very well toasted. Nice balance. Nice bit of sauce. For those that are curious, Eggs Benedict is something that I recommend that everybody try at least one time. Unless you're vegan, and obviously stay far, far away. If you don't like runny eggs, you will hate it. For those of us who are a little bit more adventurous, you don't have to be adventurous to try everything. Uh, that is delicious. The ham is seasoned, so it's not just straight ham. The crispy, buttered um, muffin, and then the egg. Perfectly executed. Four and a half out of five claws. If I could handle more holidays, I would easily have three or four of these. You're a star. I wanted this because it's like a hibiscus tea drink and it looks nice, it looks shiny. very tart. It almost tastes like drinking a sweet tart. I feel like we've had a drink at like the drop-off at Art of Animation with vodka that kind of tastes like this. And this is not alcoholic. I don't know. I, I think it's all right. It's a vibe. It's a little on the tart side. I would give it like a three out of five beverages. I don't know if I would order another one of these, but you know, I'll drink it. It's nice. For our brothers, sisters, and they and then and them, we don't ever forget about our non-alcoholic community. You're all stars. The drink said so. Ooh. I kind of like that, actually. It is tart, but it's giving me like a really, really rich, like floral lemonade sort of feeling. A little on the thicker side, but very good. If I wanted something cocktail like, honestly, I'm impressed. Uh, We've seen a lot more, a lot more non-alcoholic drinks and or spirits, both with no, zero proof alcohol and without. And honestly, no resort is doing it anywhere near as good as Grand Floridian. I don't like the heat, with, for, um, I don't like the heat praise in this resort. It's not my favorite, but in this regard, they are undefeated. Four and a half out of five points. This is the strawberry spritz. This was gonna be my second drink, but Bear ordered it, so now I need to reevaluate my second drink. I feel like it's a little, it's got a little bit too much strawberry in it, not enough rose and vodka to like balance it out. It's not balanced, it's a little uneven. It needs like 
something more, maybe just a little more strawberry. I would give it like a two out of five spritzes. I'm glad that they're over this and I did it. I don't want to drink that. This must be one of those fairy godmother blessed strawberries because this boy could sink the ship. Uh, a strawberry rosé spritz. It's looking spritzy. It's looking full. This is how I want all my wine glasses to be filled. I know they're going to bring you. But this is what I want to see. Ooh. That is more spritzy than I was expecting. But then also less. I was expecting like more carbonation. And it's given more... Look at those fancy waters that everybody likes to drink. The sparkling waters. In the can. Either way. Huh? LaCroix? LaCroix, that's what it tastes like. It tastes like LaCroix with vodka. It needs more of the strawberry, less of everything else. Uh, if you want something light and crisp, that will definitely do it. It'll probably pair well with most things on the buffet, but it can use some work. Three and a half out of five plus. I return with some bread and some orange marmalade because orange marmalade always gives me Winnie the Pooh vibes. I have absolutely no idea why. We're going to back it up, but I suppose in my childhood somewhere I confused the two and now they are inexorably linked. Always. It's like an orange rind and jam form. The salt, perfect. Do be careful when you're grabbing things from the buffet. The plant-based symbols are there, but because the labels and the food is themed, they're really, really tiny at the very, very top. They are there. They're really, really small. The croissants were not labeled the jam was. So, vegan jam, non-vegan croissant. Even still, I'm giving it a 3.75 out of 5 pause. It's giving good bread, as the princess would say, and the jam, it'd be jamming. Here we have the steak hash with a homemade uh, house-made, homemade, house-made steak sauce. Now the steak sauce is optional, it's on the side in the corner if you want it or don't want it. I decided to go all in for all the fixings. Got the little pieces of steak in there, you got the greenery, some peppers. This one looks interesting. I find a lot of hatches to be lacking, like out of balance. Too much of one thing, too little of another. Too salty, too hashy. Honestly, it's just the right amount of steak. Like, we've gotten hatches from like huge chunks of steak, one that have like little slivers like it was like shredded. These are like little crumbles and it actually kind of works. The flavor's good. You get steak and then you also get hash. It's working. It's working. I'll invite it out to the club. Four to five plus. Does he come? Oh, I wish, but it's not a magic, right? Yeah. You see, do you need always like to show up anyway? Snap the slivers and just like, boom, what is he? But, you know, he doesn't really make wishes come true anymore. More so just to say hi. See, I've never had a friend. A true prince. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tofu scramble. This is the star of the vegan options here at 1900 Park Fair. It kind of reminds me of Chef Mickey a little bit. It's not bad. It's like vegetable forward. You don't really get a lot of flavor from the tofu at all. It's definitely not as good as the tofu scramble that I got at the Grand a couple of days ago. Grand, sorry, we're at the Grand. Grand Flirting Cafe. I don't know, compared to that, that was a high standard. I would give it like a three out of five tofu scramble. You could definitely pile this on like some bagel or something. Ooh, I'm gonna do that. I know they're really good, good option. This tofu is looking scrambolicious. This is your brain on Disney, kids. Eat your vegetables unless you want to look like this. Got some nice mix of vegetables. You got the spinach, you got the tomato in here. And the tofu is nice and crumbled. We had a cube at Grand Floridian Cafe. This is more of like an actual scramble scramble. Very hearty, turmeric forward. I'm loving the tomatoes like smashed and like reduced. Instead of being like whole tomatoes, that kind of works. And that acidity 
help sort of like balance out the spinaches in this dish. It's almost scrambled my rating system. I would give it four and a half out of five flaws. It's giving a good scramble. It's in, it's in good company. It's in good company. Why, hello there, dreamers. It's me, Jimmy Cricket, your host for this very special gathering of all those who carry a few niche grantors, too. Oh, and would you look at here? Wow! Look at all those amazing, glittery wishes. Magnificent! Next, in your best wishing voice, nice and loud now. Repeat after me. I wish my wish. I wish my wish. As wish makers do. As wish makers do. And believe in myself. And believe in myself. To make it come true. To make it come true. Beautifully done. Funny thing about wishes. Something happened right away. I feel like they're doubling up on everything, like double the meats, double the eggs. But we're gonna start with the bacon. We always come home, we come back to the bacon. Bacon one. I know Cinderella was looking for a magical one. I don't think it's what she meant, but we're gonna go with it anyway. I'll admit, I don't have a whole lot of faith in theme park bacon. It's rarely thick cut. It's always like that thin, flimsy, Waffle House style bacon. This is actually somewhat crispy. A little bit more, I don't know, bacon -y than the bacon that we normally get on OFA. Maybe it's the first day, hopefully not, and it continues to be that way. But until then, this bacon is a cut above the rest. Three and a half out of five minutes. Scrambled eggs, and they have two types of scrambled eggs on the buffet, actually. They have regular scrambled, and then they have a cheesy scrambled egg. This is the plain scrambled eggs. Nice and fluffy, it's got that bounce to it. Sort of like a tigger, but the one you'd actually eat. Bouncy, trouncy, full of fun. It's a nice, light, fluffy egg. Doesn't sit heavy. Definitely like whipped up, and I like that. That is 3.75 out of five points. Next up, we have cheesy eggs. Got a nice bit of cheddar in there with your eggies. Now, if you want Tabasco sauce, we do have seen customers walking around with it. So it is in a restaurant, so be sure to ask if you want something. To me, if I'm gonna have a scrambled egg, having without cheese is a miss. Peach Therona, I'm glad they have an option for both. The cheesy egg is definitely by far my favorite. I do that four out of five paws. The cheesy and eggy all at the same time. So they have two different types of sausage on the buffet. Uh, I had to give myself a little foodie shorthand so I'd remember which one was which. This one here in the middle, surrounded by all the other deliciousness, is the one I don't like. This is pork sausage. I don't love sausage to begin with, uh, especially breakfast sausage tends to be greasy and dense, and I don't love a ton of grease in my breakfast. But we're here to try everything for you guys, so I will take one for the team. It's porky, it's greasy. I don't love it. If you love pork sausage, that's all for you. Luckily, there is another option. I'm giving that one two and a half out of five points. Here is the one I like to see. We have a nice, thick chicken sausage. On other buffets, they hide chicken sausage in like the kids section. This time, it's on the main buffet. Like, Literally a couple spots over from the pork sausage. Easy to find, and there is tons of it. This is the way. The chicken, for some reason, just doesn't hold in the grease that the pork does, and comes off with a much more like mild taste from sausage, which is what I prefer. That is amazing. That is three point seven five out of five claws. Throw the chicken, throw the pork out, and stew. I feel like Grand Floridian cat. 
Pepe is already winning on the waffle game too because Earth Balance makes it so much better already. But we got these by request. Is the only thing you can get by request. This one died before it could make it. I guess I'll just take this half. For some reason, I'm eating it with my hands today, but I'm still gonna dunk. Cheers. It tastes like your standard Mickey Waffle. This one's a little dry. This one tastes more like, I don't know, one that's at the same level as a quick service, where it's just kind of like barely there. Uh, they cook these by hand. They're not gonna taste like this every time. Mickey Waffles are hit or miss. Today was not a hit. And uh, Grand Flirting Cafe knocked it out of the park. And they set the, the standard really high. We didn't mean to go to Grand Flirting Cafe like two days before 1900 Park Fair opened, but that's what happened. And now we're comparing the two. And for vegans, I'm thinking Grand Flirting Cafe is better. Mickey. It's a half a Mickey. And hollow. I wouldn't normally complain about a hollow waffle, but. It would make it a lot easier for them to do it princess style. Just reach in and just scoop up the syrup because apparently Mickey waffles are sauce chips. Honestly, even though it's hollow, I'm liking the way these Mickey waffles are, are cooked. Crisp on the outside, soft on the inside. It's a top tier Mickey waffle. Do I agree finally that things that are Mickey shaped are better? No, I don't. But it's still good. Four out of five. In another case of letting the foodie thoughts win, I have a waffle that was already cut in half. I have a tofu scramble sitting on a plate. It looks like it needs a home. I'm gonna turn this upside down. We're gonna scoop the tofu scramble into the Mickey waffle with, you know, some sort of precision. We're gonna take a little bit of the syrup. We're gonna pour that right over top. We're gonna take the other half of the Mickey waffle the princess was so gracious to leave for me. And we're gonna make this a Mickey Waffle Tofu Scramble Sandwich. The only thing I have to say, is it a Disney buffet? Have it your way. Make combinations go wild. That is a five out of five pause. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. Now I have to try this concoction. I feel like everything's better with syrup. This is giving me those Mickey Frittata vibes, but a little bit sweeter. Oh yeah, this is fire. This is a five out of five. This is a princess city's item, 100%. This is, this is the food hack you need in your life. Oatmeal. And the first time in forever that I've got oatmeal with something other than brown sugar, which I'm on and off with the brown sugar. They have a plant-based caramelized apple right there with the oatmeal. So I got both of them so I can try it together. Oh goodness, that's like eating apple pie. And I'm making a mess, so I don't even care. It's not very princess-like of me. But that's amazing, that's a five out of five. 100% uh, from moving forward, I think you should put caramelized apples in your oatmeal with a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon. That's the way. Oatmeal! It would surprise you to think that even though I am a pancake connoisseur, it's my favorite breakfast item, a second is definitely oatmeal in all of its forms. Uh, this caramelized apple on top of oatmeal sounds delicious. It's giving me those like Quaker oat oatmeal packets, but like made in house. That is oatmeal that would make your grandmother proud. Or cry because you came to Disney instead of spending your money to go visit her. No, I'm not talking to you guys. I may be talking to myself, but visit your grandparents. Do it now. That is a 4.75 out of 5 plus. In the allergy menu, it does say that the oatmeal is gluten-free, and I can tell you 100% it is not gluten-free. If you are gluten-free, do not get the oatmeal. Disney lies about the oatmeal.
don't mind childless millennials and childless everywhere, your existence is valid. I want you to know that just because it says kids section doesn't mean that you can't eat there. Sometimes this is hiding some of their best treats at that station. This time they're hiding a breakfast pizza. Now it's square, not like pizza slice cut, but it's giving me throwbacks to Gooby's Kitchen in Disneyland. Uh, this one, I was excited for. That is amazing and unique. It's basically uh, eggs, bacon, and cheese on a croissant style crust. So like you see, it's like not a normal pizza crust. It's really like croissant, like matted down and then all the toppings on top. That is amazing. Don't miss that. Five out of five claws. Some of better sesame slice. This guilty pleasure, they have a gummy bear station. There's nothing, nothing over there to put it on. It's just like tots and then a tower of gummy bears. Little like gotcha machine twist. I'm not saying no to eating my own gummy kind. Give me Hari Bar. I like it. As a gummy bear connoisseur, these are good. Four out of five plus. We got a pan clock. Nice, classic pan clocks. The way that I like them. No funny gimmicks. It's not wearing a hat. It doesn't have confetti on it. There's no chocolate chips hidden in it. None of that weird blueberry stuff. Just a nice, plain, classic. I don't even believe it's American, but it's a pancake. And I like my pancakes. I don't care about your sauce, your sauce traps. I don't care about your shapes. We'll drop a serve. Light, it's fluffy, it's doing the pancake crowd. It's a little overcooked, not like burnt, but you can taste it's really approaching that level. It's still a solid pancake. 3.25 out of 5. We have a southern breakfast staple biscuits with sausage gravy. You get these tiny little buttermilk biscuits and you get a nice sausage gravy. Now there's no bits floating in it but do not be fooled. It is definitely sausage gravy. It smells like sausage gravy. It looks like sausage gravy and the label told me it was. So I believe it. Biscuit nice and fluffy. Definitely sausage gravy with that hint of like that soft breakfast sausage spice in there. I wish the gravy was a tad bit Tender. It's rare for me to say for gravy, but it's still really good. Three and a half out of five points. I toasted a plain bagel, put some date jam, and now I'm gonna throw some tofu scramble on here. Just make it nice and full. Create your own buffet. Can you add something sweet to this? It just elevates it. This is like the little thing that you need, whether it's maple syrup or sweet jam. It's really like the thing that you need for filthy scramble. I would give this a five out of five. I think it's a princess city item. Another princess bear concoction. Always, always let the foodie thoughts win. It's really the date jam that makes that. That nice layer of sweetness underneath it. The syrup is a bit more like Sweet. The date jam is more like sweet, like bobsled time. It's a five out of five out of five out of five out of five. Five out of five out of five out of five out of five. It's a five out of five pause. It's on the bear sessions list. Go wild. It's a buffet. It's your vacation. Don't let anybody tell you to eat your own food. I don't know what happened to Mickey, but it looked like he'd been out in the sun too long. Mickey got a tan. Poor guy. Nice, fluffy Mickey waffle. It actually doesn't taste burnt. It's probably just a waffle iron, but it's a Mickey waffle. Three out of five. Hello, hello. All right, yourself? Thank you, sir. 
Oh, yes, actually. Appreciate it. Like the little treat is the hand carved ham. And so that's the only item in the carving station. Now, the um, customer did offer some crispy skin with it. They have a whole pile up there. Do not miss out on that. I'm gonna try them together. Because they just look like they were meant to be. Oh, the crunch on that skin, it's like candy. Honestly, skip the bacon, just go straight to the garden station, and that's for the crispy skin. So much better. Heck like approaching to your own, but still tender. That is very good. I usually think the carbon station ends up being like one of the most boring portions of the buffet, but this little extra bit, excellent. They can do with the sauce, there's no sauces. That juicy tender, you don't even really need it. 4.75 out of 5 points. Here you have the as labeled cinnamon pull apart bread, and it does, in fact, pull apart. And it stabs very nice with the fork. If you've ever had, never had pull apart bread, it's basically a cinnamon roll. And little bits that just pull apart. Exactly as the name says. It's a good flavor, not too much cinnamon. The syrup is good. Sticky, but worth it. Four out of five points. Seventy-five, uh, basically a gin cocktail with delusions of grandeur, trying to fool us all into thinking it's more than just juniper berries in a cup. I'm on to you. Why well, does gin always feel like drinking a porcupine? Just stabs of pain everywhere. Not like pain, pain, but like. I have a hard time enjoying a lot of gin drinks. Honestly, if we're not at somewhere at uh, Destino Tower, most gin drinks are a no for me, fam. That is not my jam. It's a two out of five clause. Your mileage may vary. If you're a gin person, you're probably gonna love this. Me, I feel like somebody set me up. Potato barrels. They're just tots. Just regular tots. Put some marmalade on them or something. They're a little dry. A little overcooked, but if I threw it in the tofu scramble, that would be fire. I think anything with the tofu scramble is fire. You should just mix it with all your food. Tots by themselves are like a one and a half out of five tots. They're not they're not that good. If you want good tots, you want to go to like you just some cream. It really wouldn't be a Disney buffet if they didn't have tots somewhere. Nice crispy potato barrel, tater tots, whatever you call them. If you have some other name other than potato barrel, tater tots, I need to know. These things just have too many names. It's tasting like it needs an oil change. Like an old jalapa. Two out of five points. Granola with dried fruit and mixed nuts. I purposefully avoided the dried fruit and that bite, but I'm so glad that I did. You don't usually get um, granola or trail mix that's vegan because it's honey in it or whatever. 
I just want a plant-based symbol. I'm here for it. It is so tasty. I feel like I just ate one of those like urban pecan pie, pan pie things you got from Universal for Mardi Gras. Like just a nice, fully flavored, almost dessert style granola. I love that. I give that a five out of five. That is a surprising princess design. I thought I was going to eat this. I love me some good granola for breakfast, and they do have a yogurt that you can pair with it. The yogurt obviously is not vegan. That was more dairy than I wanted to chance this morning, so just granola. Mm. Walnuts. That's a good thing. I was not expecting that. The walnuts, the almond flakes. It's giving a good nutty granola. Nothing wrong with it. I think that's above that. Four out of five. I got before dessert was this mixed fruit, which again, we had mixed fruit at um, Grand Flirting Cafe earlier this week. <laughs> this is different fruit stuff. Super fresh, super amazing. Love this fruit. Get it if you want it. Five out of five. Never to be underestimated, some nice creamy grits. These are not vegan. That does mean they have some dairy in them. But most good grits should have a little bit of dairy in them. Or your plant-based milk of choice. Those are buttery. Like, there may be uh, some cream in there somewhere though. Like, not milk. I'm gonna need some emergency lactate for how buttery and creamy those are. Glad I saved that one for It's good, don't be wrong, but like I was not expecting that level of like buttery punch. I feel like I just licked a stick of butter. 2.75 out of 5 points. Yes, we have finally made it to desserts. And we're starting off with banana bread. There's one other bread which you have on the bar, but some banana bread. Now, that's some dark banana bread, like dark, dark. Like darker than my dreams. It's actually quite moist, very fluffy. That's good. We've had some varying degree of quality of banana bread. I would say this is in the upper half. I would give it 3.75 out of 5 points. Good old fashioned donut hole. I know that these are supposed to represent the whole missing the middle of donuts, but I look at these and nothing about this says donut hole to me. It's a donut ball. If it was a hole, it would literally just be nothing. It's the center of the donut. That's the hole. I'm not I'm not on board with that crazy logic. This makes sense to me. It's like Duncan. I prefer to be Krispy Kreme. Three out of five plus. Now I know it looks like a cinnamon roll, but it's actually a guava cream cheese danish. Which means I can have the tiniest of bites. Just because we want to try everything for you guys. And I'm not going to be able to eat this. Not at all. Try a little bit of guava. There's a tiny bit of cream cheese. Any more than that, and I'd be in trouble. And we have another meal today after this. Not like right away, but like another meal. What that meal is, you'll find out later. I'm not telling you right now, but it's a Danish. 3.75 out of 5 points. The singular and unique vegan option on the dessert line, it is a chocolate muffin. And all these beautiful toppings, it's just on the top. It's definitely stuck to the paper. Uh, it's giving me vibes of the seasonal cupcake that we get that I do not like, but hopefully it's better than that. Cheers. Honestly, I'm shocked that it's vegan. It tastes like a 
well moist and fluffy biscotti, chocolate biscotti, like full on biscotti flavor, but in a muffin form. Love it, love it, love it, love it. If I had room, I would eat like five of these, and I would love some like soyo on it. Oh my god, warmed with some soyo, that would be almost as good as the strawberry shortcake that they have at the Turf Club right now. That's a five out of five. That's a princess taste item. It's not every day you can get a muffin like this, and I wish it was available in more places on Disney World property. Disney is doubling down. Not only is it a vegan chocolate muffin, it's a double chocolate vegan muffin. Wow. Disney, you really make me question you somehow. Because when you can make things like this, the fact that we get these sad black and white cupcakes all across the resort that are honestly, if I'm being honest, and we usually are, quite terrible. Uh, why? The other day I was throwing shade because you gave us an Aaron McKinnon's biscuit at the Grand Floridian Cafe because I was giving up on you making something good, but then you give me this. Shame on you. It's too good. 4.75 out of 5 plus. Citizen of the dark corners of the Disney internet, you can put your pitchforks down. Your Grand Floridian strawberry soup is still here. Put the torches away, the angry signs, go drink a nice tall glass of palm juice, it's still here. The nice strawberry soup. Now, it does come like the base soup. They have fresh strawberries, you can put it in yourself. You don't have to. They also have whipped cream. I'm lactose intolerant, so no whipped cream for me. Now there is still dairy in the soup. This is not vegan. Vegetarians, eat your heart out. Ooh. Okay. I can understand the hype. Let me give you a second bite. I'll admit, I thought a few were silly. I was like, strawberry soup? Sounds weird, okay? It sounds a little odd. For those of you that haven't had it, all it really is is a thinner strawberry yogurt. It eats like a soup, but it's really just a thinned out yogurt. It tastes though, amazing. For the fresh strawberries, they had just some every dessert. I would get this. This is a five out of five plus. I love strawberries. So there is a bit of bias that's booked in there. So you're giving me strawberry soup, topped with strawberries, if you have like a non-dairy whipped cream, I would also be even better. But I will take this as is. I'm not taking off any points. I can understand why you guys are upset. This is like the uh, nudes of the Grand Floridian Resort. I understand that. We came. You've got your strawberry soup. You have your buffet back. The characters are amazing. We park fared. We park fared very hard, very well. Um, I don't. I don't think this was like a superior breakfast than any other character dining. I would say, as far as vegan goes, I would probably say Akersus is a better vegan experience. Like more unique options for vegans than this. Um, I would say the same about Grand Floridian Cafe because for some we didn't even plan on Comparing everything to Grand Floridian Cafe, but it just ended up being that way and I Don't know. I, I thought 1900 Park Fair would be a little more elevated, but it was just kind of It was nice and it was Grand Floridian nice, but it wasn't like oh my god I need to leave the park and come here unless you want to meet those characters. Yes. I definitely want to know what your guys' nostalgic feelings were because, again, this is our very first time to this buffet. This is literally the last restaurant Disney property that we had not been to because we missed our April 2020 reservation for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. The characters, though, were amazing. That's, again, a lot of the reason that most people will come to a character breakfast, a breakfast buffet. If you're not looking to meet characters, I'm always going to recommend you go to BOMA. 
and skip out on every other yeah, character buffet because nice. the value in the food for both vegan and non-vegan there is perfect. I like Tusker House yes. too. It's nice though to see a prince back in the rotation in a character dining restaurant. Yes. You don't get very many princes nowadays and Aladdin was absolutely killing it. Was. Mirabelle was killing it. Tiana was killing it. Even Cinderella. The queen herself, princess herself, was doing an amazing job. They were all doing an awesome job. Make sure you show them respect and deserve when you come eat here. Now, if there's yes. anything that else you would like to see us do, by all means, let us know in the comments below. Now, we'll always be the place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Woo. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear might turn himself into a bird and fly away from the bird hotel. For some reason, I have Nelly Furtado stuck in my head now, but you heard the girl. <laughs> He's like a bird.